This is an Epiphone Les Paul. It's actually a limited edition. He only made a few of these. And WW3, it must mean World War III, huh? Yeah, well look, World War III happened on the top of this guitar. I'm not going to say that's ugly, but that's not uh, too popular, I would think. Anyway, this guitar you could buy for about $300. And that's the reason why people buy these, because they're affordable. I'm sure everybody would rather have a Gibson Les Paul, which are very expensive now. So Gibson put out their budget line of guitars, their imported guitars, with the name Epiphone. So they'd actually have an affordable line of guitar, and then they have their top of the line Gibson made in America, made in the USA guitars. Anyway, this guitar here, when the neck is joined and there's not you know bolts on the back of it, like on a Stratocaster, say, uh, it's considered a, a higher quality instrument, you know, in most circles. Anyway, I can see right through the finisher that this is a mahogany guitar. And being a limited edition, the idea behind that is they make it more of a collector, collector's piece. So you feel like you're the only one that has something like this. It's a lot like the real deal, the real Les Paul, except that uh, the pickups would be a little bit cheaper. And when I say cheaper, the difference between a good pickup and a pickup that's not so good as far as you know, a balanced sound really is the way that we always uh, think of a good pickup, is that an inexpensive pickup on a guitar has got some spikes in the sound wave. So if you were looking at a, you know, a sound wave on a screen and could look at how the pickup is creating sound, an inexpensive pickup would have spikes like that, as opposed to a higher quality pickup which has a smoother curve like that. The reason that's significant is is if you turn the volume way up on a less expensive guitar or less quality guitar, those spikes in that sound wave are the first things that hit your ears. So actually you're hearing certain frequencies a lot louder than the other frequencies and that tends to throw the balance of the sound out and you don't get a nice smooth uh, you know, guitar replication that way. Anyway, so what can I say about this guitar? It's got uh, a stud tail piece like a Les Paul. It's got a two pneumatic bridge like a Les Paul. And this one doesn't have very much sweep. Like some of these bridges have a, a, larger, uh, a larger degree of adjustability where you can move the uh, bridge piece back further to get the intonation just right. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't do it on this one, but I can see that this one here is cranked all the way to the front. Uh, in order to get that further forward, I'd have to turn that bridge piece around so the, the point of contact is further forward. That way it keeps the guitar from uh, playing out of tune as you come up to these higher frets. This is a, a rosewood fretboard. Now remember, this guitar is made in Korea. So uh, where these types of wood you know, uh, come from is hard to say. You know, Honduras mahogany is actually the best type of mahogany. Maybe, uh, you know, Gibson uh, imported woods over to have these made, but I don't know that. So, uh, you know, really it's very much like your regular Les Paul, except, you know, it doesn't have the same kind of feel about it. In other words, this is sort of manufactured in a way where it's on an assembly line and the lacquer uh, feels a little tacky. Uh, doesn't feel like it's had the same sort of quality control, so to speak, that a regular American uh, Les Paul would have. I know there's a lot of people out there that have Les Pauls that's, or Epiphone guitars that swear by them, but uh, you, know, you can't tell the difference if you really, you know, uh, have a chance to A and B, you know, have two Les Pauls in front of you, an Epiphone Les Paul, a Gibson Les Paul, have good amplification, go back and forth from one to the other, then you really can... Uh, you know, uh, you know, judge for yourself which one is the better guitar. And if you can't tell the difference, then it wouldn't matter which one you owned. 
I would say that uh, most of the professional musicians in the industry who really are, you know, getting paid to play and earn a living playing the guitar would prefer to have a Gibson Les Paul because they can tell the difference. So, uh, not that this is not a good instrument, it just doesn't have the same sort of, uh, you know, quality and feel that a Gibson American-made guitar would have. It's got nice, uh, you know, machine heads. They look, uh, you know, like they have the encased gear inside there. Usually that's a sign that the, that the uh, quality of the, uh, you know, product is good when it's an encased type of machine head like that. You know, it's got binding on the neck. These are like a Fender style uh, uh, tuning knob here, you know, volume control knob. I don't know if those came with the guitar. They probably did. This guitar, you know, uh, and again, I don't know. What do I know? I'd never own one of these. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It's got humbucking pickups like uh, a regular Les Paul. It means it's got two single coil pickups in there for canceling hum. Thank <laughs> you.